Hey everybody, it's Justin here. Um, I've been wanting to do this video for a while and have just had other things come up that I wanted to do more than this. Um, I also need to do a video about the patina on the Para 3 Lightweight. I haven't forgotten about that. But I wanted to do this one first because these are probably the three most well-known mid-tech, I guess it'd be mid-tech, mid-tech brands in the knife industry, at least in my estimation. I don't have any data to support that, but just kind of my impression of seeing posts on Instagram, seeing posts on Facebook, um, seeing YouTube videos, just stuff like that. So you have the Chris Reeve um, Large Incosi, which is kind of the the heir to the um, Sabenza. You have the Strider Knives SNG, um, this is from a recent drop, maybe, I don't know, a couple months ago. So pretty, pretty new. Um, birth date on the Chris Reeve was, uh, maybe a year ago or something. And then you have the Hinder XM18 3.5. And this one, this is also about maybe eight months old. So you can see it has the 20 CV. Um, the show scale actually was originally blue G10. But I bought this carbon fiber scale to swap out because, well, I like carbon fiber. And I think it also looks good with the, the bronze <clears throat> lock side. So I just wanted to give just some some of my own impressions of these brands. And, um, you know, if I, just some thoughts on which one I think is, is the best in terms of usability, um, best for the price, just things like that. So... You know, looking at these three knives, they've all been around for a long time. You know, the Inkosi is is kind of a new model, but again, it's more of like a spiritual heir to the to the Sabenza. Very similar, some minor changes. The SNG is is largely unchanged, and it has been for I don't know two decades or more now. And then the XM eighteen three point five is also, you know, largely unchanged, except for the triway pivot system which was introduced eh, three or four years ago now. You can see there the, oops, sorry about that, the triway pivot system indicator on the flipper tab. So that's how you know that it has the triway. And if you don't know what that is, basically hinder knives now come with um, bronze washers, they come with Teflon washers, and they also come with bearings. Um, this one I have on the bronze washers and it's, it's very smooth. It's not, it's not like a drop shut smooth, but it's, it's very smooth and there's no blade play and it's pretty, pretty well centered. So yeah, the strider comes on bronze washers, which are a different size for each side of the knife. And the reason being is on this side, you have to have a smaller washer because of the lock bar. This side, you can have a larger washer. Um, I think they've been coming with, with, bronze washers for a long time. This guy's quite a bit of lock stick. So yeah, pretty simple design on these. I mean, you have the G10 side, which this is one piece of G10 mates mating up with the titanium side. It's a titanium frame lock as is the hinderer. Um, the biggest difference between the strider and the hinderer being that the hinderer has a lock bar insert here. You can kind of see it there. They both have the um, lock bar stabilizer, I think it's called. This one was swapped out for this for this red one, but it, it came with a black one. And then the Chris Reeve knife is also a titanium frame lock, which is a, a design that was that was really pioneered by by Chris Reeve himself. And it doesn't have an insert or anything, and I don't know if they carbonize the face of that or not. They may do that to help with wear over time, but yeah, so they're all three frame locks. The hinder has the insert, the other two don't. And yeah, so if you look at the basic design of, of all of these, they're, they're very similar. Um, so some other similarities between these would be um, price range. So they all are right around 450 to $500. The striders are a little harder to get, so secondary prices, you know, you might pay six hundred dollars. 
I guess, you know, the Chris Reeves aren't so much so different, but the retail is, I think, 450 on these, 500 on the Striders, or 495 and then I think the Hinders are like 425 or 430 I can't remember what I paid. So, you know, price-wise, retail, they're all very similar. Um, let me think about this. Some other similarities, uh, blade steel is, eh, I mean, they all use very high-end steels. Chris Reeve uses S35BN, which they've used for years now. It does not have anything that indicates that, but it does come on the authenticity card. Strider uses various steels. This one happens to be in PD, PD1, which is pretty similar to crew wear. And then, but they also, they use a wide range of steels. I've seen them in CTS, XHP, um, S30V, you know, um, I think they've had D2 models. And then Hinderer primarily uses CPM 20CV and also S45VN. So, you know, they all use higher end steels. I would say overall Hinderer probably tends to use a little bit higher end steels. But, you know, for the tasks that we're going to use these for, they're, they're pretty analogous. Um, in terms of construction, the, the Chris Reeve is all titanium. The Strider, as I mentioned, has the G10 side with the titanium lock side. And then the Hinderer has the titanium lock side with a, I think it's a steel liner. And then typically like a G10 scale on the top. Although you can buy all kinds of scales for the hinderers, which brings me to another point. The hinderer is by far the most customizable out of these knives. So this one, as I mentioned, it came with the bronze lock side and then a blue G10 scale. I swapped the scale for a carbon fiber one. I just like carbon fiber, I think it looks better. Um, but you can swap like these, these barrels, these Chicago screws, you can swap the pivot screw, you can swap this filler tab, the clip. Um, there's all kinds of stuff you can buy. And the prices vary widely. I mean, you can buy a titanium scale for one of these that's, you know, 200 bucks. Um, or you can buy a G10 scale in just about any color you, you could imagine for 60 bucks. I've seen guys put thousands of dollars into XM18 18s and it's it's pretty crazy the striders in terms of custom customization not nearly as broad this one i didn't mention but i did put a deep carry clip on it and then there's a wide range of these lock bar stabilizers you can buy which also you can buy those for the hinders um but beyond that i mean you can you know anodize the titanium and stuff like that but there's not a huge aftermarket of of options for striders and I think some of that just owes to the fact that for a long time, it would, if you, if you disassembled a Strider, it would void your warranty. So I would imagine that there aren't as many people out there advertising aftermarket parts because of that. However, that is no longer the case. Um, and then Chris Reeve, they make aftermarket clips. And again, you can anodize the titanium, stuff like that, but not nearly the, the aftermarket as, as hinderer knives. And, you know, Rick Hinder has pushed that a lot himself. Um, speaking of warranty, in my opinion, although I haven't really had any warranty experience with any of these makers, so I'm just kind of going off of secondary impressions and knowledge. Chris Reeve has the best warranty, from my understanding. Um, they are very quick to respond, very supportive of your claims. They can do a reblade for a relatively small fee. I can't remember what that is. Um, they will refinish the knives for you. It's called a spa treatment in the blades, um, which you know is is really cool. So there's a lot of a lot of support there. Strider, you know, pretty good I think, as long as you don't put aftermarket stuff on these. They really don't like that. And then Hinderer, I'm assuming the warranty is good on these as well. You know, these are all made in the United States. Hinderers are from Ohio. Striders come out of California. And then the Chris Reeves are made in Idaho, which I think it says it on here. Yeah, Idaho made there. So, 
yeah, so warranty, you know, I'd probably give it to Chris Reeve, but they they all, I mean, they're going to take care of you if something happens. So I don't think there are any concerns there. And then, yeah, you're in 10 minutes. Um, kind of wrap it up on um, packaging. Let's talk about packaging just a little bit. So the hinderers, you know, many of you guys have probably seen, they come in a white cardboard box with some peanuts, a card saying who tuned the knife, and then they come with the triway pivot system. You know, decent enough packaging. It's just how hinders have come for years and years. Striders are, honestly, it's kind of, I don't understand why they do it. They ship their knives <clears throat> literally in a plastic bag. It looks like a small Ziploc bag. I don't know why, I've never understood that. Um, I think their customs come in pouches. But yeah, their production stuff, plastic bag. So I bought this one on the secondary market and um, the guy had just picked it up from Strider so it, it wasn't really used. And he still had the plastic bag and that's what he shipped it to me in. But I purchased one knife from them directly. And yeah, they put it in the plastic bag, put it in the, the USPS box and sent it over. So it's just kind of crazy. Pay $500 for a knife and get it in a plastic bag but if you check out my strider video um i definitely don't hate the brand i like the knives a lot i just kind of rag on their packaging and then chris reeve i would say has the best packaging at least in my opinion they come in a nice white box they come with a cloth and they also supply the wrench to disassemble the knife so you can see here they're all torx I don't know exactly what size or no i'm sorry these this is not a torx i think it's like a hex screw but they supply the wrench to disassemble they supply some extra grease for the pivot and they supply an authenticity card i think a sticker just a really nice presentation i purchased i don't know five or six chris reeves and they've all come like that very nice presentation nice box nice accessories so it's just kind of cool that they do that um, they really seem to care a lot about their customers, but you know, then again, these, these other brands do as well. So, um, anyway, I think that's all I wanted to say. I don't want to let this video run too, too long. Um, the Chris Reeves come with this little lanyard. I'm not a big fan of that, but you can always disassemble it and just take it out. So, um, yeah, if I had to recommend one of these, you know, build quality, yeah, they're about the same. Chris Reeve, probably a little bit better than the other two but they're pretty analogous uh warranty chris reeve presentation probably chris reeve and then price they're they're pretty much the same um i guess the last thing i should talk about would be ergonomics which honestly i have to give it to probably strider because you can hold it very easily back here or up here and there's nice jimping on the top and the big thing about these is if you like a reverse grip it feels very very comfortable in the reverse grip because of this section right here so <clears throat> ergonomics probably strider although you know hinder is probably a close second so i guess what i'm saying is you know i if you're looking at all the different factors you know maybe chris reed would be the the recommendation but man if you have 500 bucks and you're looking at a knife i would say none of these are going to disappoint you i mean if you like the the aesthetics of one in particular go with that one um, I would recommend all of them. I think they're all good companies. They're all made very well and they're all going to give you a lifetime of, of, of good hard use. So anyway, that's just kind of my thoughts on these three iconic knife brands. Um, if you have any comments or questions, leave those below. Um, I'm so sorry if it's not a more, I guess, clear cut answer, but they're just all really good knives and it, you know, at the end of the day, it sort of just comes down to personal preference with these ones. So anyway, enjoy the rest of your week, guys, and uh, I look forward to talking to you on the next one. Have a good one.